I mean, if I had my phone, which I don't have, I could call Judy and tell her. And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Smile to the crowd. You're on. Okay, finally, we're on. Honestly, we were on uh, just a few minutes ago, and then and everything we did a 30 second show. Like 30 seconds, and then it was gone, and we well, have we no idea why. We had a complaint why. earlier that we took too long. We don't know. We don't know why. <laughs> we're back from vacation. Maybe it's just a, it's a learning curve again. Maybe we just forgot. It's like kids going back to school after a long summer, you know, going, huh, what's a pencil? That's kind of how it's been with us. So anyway, for those of you who finally found us as we've been 
Uh, we just had to go straight live here on the show. So we thank everybody for joining us, and we expect others will join us later. And if you're one of the lucky ones that found us in this second go-around, because it's a mystery, right, how this even happens, we're going to be doing a not only a wonderful painting of a sunset um, on the ocean, I'm going to show you a special trick. Now, this is really, I don't think anybody's ever showed this on YouTube before. I'm going to show you a special trick on how to lay just certain colors on your brush and create kind of the water foam on the, on the, on, on, as the uh, tide comes in, okay, as your waves come in. I'm going to show you a special way to bend the brush and load it to do that. That's really, that's the key. That's really great. And the other thing we're going to talk about in this video, at the very end, for those of you who were so gracious as to find us live and, and captivating our stay for our whole show, we're going to have a 10-minute painting, another one, it's usually in tw like 20, but probably 10, and uh, we'll do a giveaway to the live audience, plus so, you know, a couple packages of tub of towels and who knows what else. But anyway, that's going to be at the end of the show. We're going to have tell you a little bit about our adventures on our last uh, uh, trip. This painting is uh, basically, we called it Eastern uh, Caribbean Sunset. And what's kind of cool about that is that our last trip, we were in the Eastern Caribbean and got some great photos. One of the things that's inspirational for John and I, and um, as we like to say, our golden years, is that is to travel and find new things to paint and that's always been and and bring those back not just to our art academy but also to our friends on youtube so that's what you're going to be learning today and while we're doing this on a six by eight canvas this is a painting that easily can be done on a larger one but i suggest strongly suggest you try something small first this is where people run into trouble when they're learning to paint they they somehow went to a stupid painting party, and I say that, I know they were a lot of fun, and they gave you a 6 by 20 canvas, and you think anything less smaller than that, it somehow diminishes your result, and it doesn't. What you want to do when you're painting something for the first time, try it small, get a sense of where the colors go, how to do it, then do it large. It's like a dress rehearsal, okay? Um, and it will solve a lot of issues. In fact, when I paint things, um, even when I'm painting larger canvases, I try to paint a small one first so that I understand how I, I can, it's a lot easier to make changes on a small one and balance the lights and darks before I take it larger. And I'll show you an example of that today too, of, of how that's done. So we're going to learn a lot of stuff today. We're also going to have a live show tomorrow night at 7.30 where we're going to be doing, I'll show you what we're going to be painting for that later on. And then the last thing is, um, well, next to last thing, because if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so now, um, is that I'm, we're, I'm going to introduce a different brand of acrylic paint. For years, people have been telling me about a paint called Holbein. Are we down on the uh, canvas now, John? Can you no, put me down? Can be Wait, this is called Holbein paint. It's made in Japan. Um, apparently, um, this has got, uh, the way I want to say it is, even among paint manufacturers, there's great respect for this brand. There's something about the way it's made, it's certainly priced like it's very respectful. So probably a little more expensive than other brands of acrylic paint. And what I want to just, we're just going to talk about that. You know, sometimes you, everybody's just looking to sell their artwork. For instance, wants an edge. Maybe they're having trouble with paint drying out. They're looking for the edge. Um, you know, just, just the you know, cutting edge, leading edge of stuff. And so before you go out and spend a lot of money on paint, we just thought it would be fun to try this out. Yesterday, we, uh, I did a painting, and here's the color palette from that. And you can see, look at how beautiful the colors are. Isn't that, isn't that lovely? Uh, and they really are bright, pure, wonderful colors. Um, and I'll show you the painting later that I did fr from this. But really, very nice paint. So we'll, we'll, we'll play with that. This one was done. The original was done just in regular um, heavy body uh, golden and Matisse and a little bit of Liquitex. So this is our, the normal acrylics I use, but I have the same colors. And incidentally, they did not give me this paint. John and I went to, on our travels, we stopped off in Savannah, Georgia, where they have one of the largest art schools in the world. And, um, and of course, they had to have a big art store to, for all those kids. And anyway, so we went into a Dick Blick brick and mortar store and found this, uh, you know, found the Holbein paint. And what a nice store, I have to say. The one thing I liked about it was, I'll give them a plug, was that um, they gave you a discount if you signed up for their store card, which was not good online for online sales, but we did get a little bit of a discount, like 10% or something. And they were just fully stocked. It's not, 
really stocked on everything. I mean, sometimes you go to an art store and they, you go down there and they, they have everything but that one color you wanted and there's the back order, it's a problem. These people are probably can't afford to have stuff on back order. It's a huge, bright, nicely lit store in an old part of downtown Savannah and they were fully stocked. So we were able to get all the colors that I normally paint with and that's what we're going to do today and then we're going to show you how to paint this sunset. And I like my new sign. You guys like this? I found that on the trip too. I just thought I would have that. And so anyway, that's what we've got. I want to thank our moderators who are on, um, who are uh, uh, helping us today. We I know we've got Liz. Who else we've got? Did anybody even find us? Uh, Liz, Mona. Mona. And Mona was afraid she, Mona lives in Sweden, and she was very afraid. She wrote us earlier and said that they've got bad storms coming through. Mona may kind of pop in and out, depending on her Internet connection. Mo Mona, I don't know. So anyway, Judy's been without air conditioning for the last two weeks, and it's a wonder that she's even, like, you know, it's like a, f there too. she's there too and hanging in there with no AC. Plod for Judy, I'll tell you what. Send her a fan, man. Send her a fan. Oh, I got to show you my new fan. I got this great new fan. And I, um, when I was on my travels, I have to show you that too. Okay, so let's start. Why? If you have already have a canvas, just you know, orange or yellow, it doesn't matter. I've got this one orange. I think that's a good underpainting. Okay, for this, and we'll put out some paints, and then that will be fun. Fun. And I bought a big tube of white, and I put a big T there, so I'd know it was titanium. And, and I, I like this. I mean, I know that they color coat their tubes, which is nice, but they're, they're not color coated on the back is the problem. No one ever does it on the back. So you want to put a little color on the back of your tubes so whenever you turn your paint tube over, you've got, um, you've got your paint. So we'll put out some paints. We're going to talk a little bit about horizon lines. Um, oh, something else that's kind of exciting, you know, um, when we first started our Facebook club, we, we filled it up very quickly. We got to about 4,000 people really within a record number of times. But we found that some people check in a lot and others, um, you know, kind of signed up and then never did much with it. So we've opened up our Facebook club again uh, because we, we know that there those of you that are watch our show and, you know, are, are, are tuned in here um, will appreciate all the information that we post on that site as well as the fact that we put your paintings and albums, you know, the girls do it, um, our moderators do it, we have six moderators that do that, and that your stuff goes in albums, you can see what other artists are painting, you can ask, um, we have something called Workday Wednesdays, where whatever you're working on, we don't care, you can put it in the group and ask for help, CCs, capital C's, say, what, what should I do next, and you can, you know, when you get a lot of eyes looking at your artwork, it can be very helpful, all right, and I put out a little magenta, and um, so that th that's kind of exciting. Also, we give you John and I give you the latest it updates, insights. Sometimes I do blogs on there. It's a really great channel. And the, th the number one thing is for those of you who are afraid to post anything, no one's allowed to say a mean thing to anybody. It's got to be if you can't make a nice comment, then go somewhere else. We've got you know? zero zero policy now. Zero uh, tolerance. So zero tolerance. Tolerance. No second, and, and no second fact, chances. And, you're and gone. We had a few growing pains. I, I think that's fair to say over the months on this channel. In fact, John and I are not even going to post any more. Com you know, sometimes people leave us real negative feedback, and it's like getting stabbed in the gut. Occasionally, we'll we'll post that up, and we're not posting those anymore. Too negative feedback just gets deleted. That's the end of it, period. So, um, and also, if you have questions, and for instance, if you haven't been to John's channel, the Tech Bear doc on YouTube, uh, those are, that's the channel. Um, we don't put any ads on it or anything. That's the channel where, you know, I don't know how to watch this on my iPad, or I don't know how to do this or that. And it's these little short videos on, um, on how to uh, do how all the is. technical stuff on your computer. Because this is a, you, you know, a lot of our audience is over 50. And really? yeah, it's it's true. A lot of our audience is over fifty, and you can look at we can look in the demographics. YouTube tells us, and computers are not their first thing that they think about every day in the morning. You know, they're not wet wired to the computers like some of the younger generation, where they just know everything. And so John is really, you know, he's our computer wizard. Him and Sammy, and they, um, Sammy's our our bear, and um, they they really take care of everybody and help help people get um, get situated and find the right solutions to their computer difficulties so they can not only watch 
your vi our videos, say, for instance, on YouTube, on your television, or on your phone, or whatever problems you're having. And if we haven't thought to do a video on it, when, when you make it, I don't know how to do this, um, you know, chances are the tech bear will make them. They're usually short videos and fun to do. All right, so I put my paint on. Wait, wait, wait. I see a new sign there. To save time, let's just assume I know everything? Yeah, I just told them about that. Well, I think that's great. I know. It's true, too. <laughs> I like it. Do you like it? Okay. I love it. I like it. So I think, um, it, I think it's a, a stroke of brilliance. I know. And it just, just I, I think that's so important. Hey, just wait, to, everybody. See my new glasses? Huh? What John, do you think? John got new glasses. I got new glasses. Yeah. Not got, that I can see any better, but... Yeah, I can't. Well, you, you, know, you went to the eye doctor and, and uh, you can see better. Changed very little in, was it four or five years? Well, this was good, the ide ideal speaking. You know, it's so funny, my sister was uh, 63 when she died, but she never needed reading glasses, which I thought was extraordinary. I thought everybody after 45 needed reading glasses. I thought that was a given. She didn't need them. Well, she might have just been cheap, too. Hard to know. <laughs> she didn't think she needed them. <laughs> just, I don't know. Probably a question of cheapness. Uh, you think so? All right. So, all right, here's our picture, okay? Everybody's with me, right? And here's our little canvas. Now, when we talk about a horizon line, this is, this is something that every artist needs to know. Just, you need to know where your horizon line is, and you make it up. You just, you're the artist, you make it up. Van Gogh used to have all his horizon lines pretty much up here. You try not to put them dead center in the middle, and even with a camera, try to not do that. I had a photographer tell me, because I was so tall, that I should kneel down when I took photographs to make sure that my horizon line didn't get set dead center. And, um, and basically, for instance, when you're doing an ocean, and the horizon line really needs to be level. So one of the things I find extremely helpful is this a T-square. And you know this is a 6 by 8, so this is about half. I went up on my horizon line just about... Um, should be about 2 thirds. Yeah, it's about two-thirds. It went up here a little bit like that. I put a little mark there. Now, one thing, there's a T-square. One of the things that's very handy, these little triangles come in all sizes. Did you know that? That's cute. Isn't that cute? So you line up this edge. Everybody should have some triangles. I love them. The, the edge here, and then here like this, and you do that. So, and, and here's the trick. If you don't have, if you don't leave a lot of paint on your triangle, then it's not bumpy like this one is, but... You know, the sock folders will probably keep their triangles nicer than I did, but you can clean them. Where's my tub of towel things? I could clean them. Okay. So, all right, I'm going to say there's my horizon line. Now, I'm going to come down about, I don't know, a couple fingers here. I want, um, let me just use a different piece of chalk. I want to say that I've got to have this much is going to be dark. I want it dark up here. Let me just show you why. I want it dark up here so that it brings your eye down, all right? And then when we talk about, um, so it's about an inch and a half here, and then about four inches here, I want to zigzag, zigzag the, the, the beach doing that, okay? So I did that. Now here's, here's the thing, because um, this is where it all goes wrong for people. And you're going, oh my gosh, it's going wrong already? I just got here. You want your... Um... Chalk, did, I, did, did it fall down, my chalkboard? Yeah. I well, had I was it. Tripping over it, so I moved it. Well, I had it right where I wanted it. <laughs> yeah, where I could trip over. <laughs> well, listen. Okay, so all right, so you with me? No, not yet. Where are you? I'm on the chalkboard here. Okay. We okay, you're with me. Up. All right, so we're on the chalkboard here. Everybody's with me, right? Yeah. Okay. Do to do to do to do. All right. So we're all right. So we're saying there's our there's our beach. Okay. So this is level. You want that straight. So remember I told you we're going to do something like this, kind of zigzag it in. But what you don't want is this. Okay, and here's why. It's just, it has to be, it has to be a zigzag. If you're saying that here's the, here's the ocean and then it does this and this. But if you do this, it's going to look weird. Okay. So good to know, right? I mean, because I see that happen all the time. People do this great ocean scene, and then they do this weird... Sometimes they'll have the beach looking right at you, and they'll do this with the beach. And even when the beach is looking right at you, say it's like the tide's coming in like this, it's still got to be a straight like, like this. Okay? All right? So if you learn nothing else on this show but that, 
That will, that will just make your ocean scenes look much better. Good to know, yeah. So, all right, the other thing you often see is that people put the, the sun dead center, which you can do, and oftentimes photographers love to do it. I think it's a little more effective to have it over to the side. That's what's where this is going to be. Um, I, on a sunset, I like to start off with my lightest colors first. I'm going to be using some angle brushes today, which I really like. This is a, a, a half inch. Let me re put my glasses on so I can read the numbers. Half inch. Oh, you'd think I'd know these by now, wouldn't you? This is a 3 eighths inch, and then I've got a quarter inch, and then I've got a couple of art sherpa brushes. For those of you who are not aware of it, Cinnamon Cooney is my daughter. The art sherpa. The art sherpa. And um, so those of you who don't know, it's kind of the better kept secrets on YouTube, I think. I don't think anybody knows that. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not complaining. Just an observation. Just the way it is. Just the way it is. All right. So I'm going to take the larger of this angle brush, um, and I'm going to work on my sky a little bit. So I've already got some orange on here. So I'm going to take some this bright yellow color, and let's see what happens when we put it on here. Wow, that's nice and bright, isn't it? So I probably want to make that an orange. So let's take a little bit of cad red medium with that. This is the whole bind paint now. And, um, oh, that's pretty. So sort of a light orange color. And we're going to come up under here like this, keeping the brush strokes kind of back and forth. It's going to do this. This is, it, I like how it paints. Now, if you're asking me about this, I like how it paints over the darker canvas, okay? Now, I don't want it all the same color, color so I'll take a little bit of magenta and yellow. And that's a different orange. I know it's, it's crazy, but that is a different orange. Do you see what I'm doing here? Kind of make, putting some of that orange in. A um, little bit different. And, and maybe just a little bit of magenta straight on here like this. And maybe we'll put some darker red down here and kind of play with this a little bit. Just, just have fun with it. Bl try to blend it in a little bit, wet on wet. Let's try a little bit of yellow on here. Just my brush is dirty, okay? And now let's see, put a, I just want a little bit more yellow with this. Lighten this one up here and let's see, where am I? Oh, that's nice. I like this bright. It does make a very nice bright light orange, okay? Now do, down toward my horizon line, here's a trick. Um, some of you have trouble, and it's not anybody's fault, that sometimes if you've got any kind of physical thing where it's hard for you to, you know, sometimes people's hands shake or they're, you know, they just don't have that, um, particularly when you're doing this on an easel and maybe it's just hard to get, um, uh, your uh, line straight. Uh, this is artist tape. This is a f one quarter inch artist tape. But to tear off a piece, pull it tight between your fingers. See how I'm laying this down like this? Now, I'm just going to put the artist tape right there. That's where I want my horizon line. Just going to take that off of there like this. Now, one thing you can do is uh, you can use your palette knife to cut it. Did you guys know that? You can just put the palette knife down here like that. See how that just tears off nicely? Now, double check it. Now, this is key here. Double check it and make sure you have a straight line. And that's where you line the side of this triangle up and make sure that it's straight. Okay, when you got it on there, you didn't screw it up. Okay? That's easy to do, particularly if you're trying to do this on an easel and not on a flat surface. All right, so now I've got my, oh, my artist tape there. Yeah? So now I can be kind of willy nilly. I don't have to be so careful. See, that's the thing. Now it can be kind of kind of loose and uncareful. So here's a little bit of yellow. And I want some yellow down here in this part, right over the tape like that. I want some yellow. I want that to be a bit brighter. And here's a little magenta and white. Let's see what that does. Ooh, that's pretty. I want a little of that color too. Maybe somewhere up in here like this. A little bit of magenta and white. You notice I just kind of, if I'm pink, I have a thing of white. Ooh, I like that pink. Okay, maybe I'll put a little of that pink up in here too. Now, here's the trick, wipe the brush off. So you just don't have a, we've done some sunsets before, but now kind of fuzz out the edge. So if you're gonna put that, you know, suggest a little pink up here in the clouds, which you can do, and you can, you know, this is the kind of thing where you can do this a little differently each time. Um, just put some classical music on and go for it, right? But when you want, what you wanna do is just soften the edges so that you don't, Everything kind of melts from one edge into another, all right? So we're going to say, that's pretty nice, okay? Now, right up at, but here, I'm going to have my sun. So I'm going to say, here's my, my sun right here. 
Let's even say where that is, right there. And it's kind of, it's not really even round. It's just sort of flat. And let's put a little white with that and see what we get. Now, if I got too much paint on the brush, which I do, I will wipe, I will just take all of it off. And I still have paint. And then I'm going to come up here sideways and kind of lighten up the side of it like this so that you're talking about um, a little bit lighter right there, okay? Now, I, just everybody wants to do a circular sun, but it doesn't have to be circular, okay? And let's see, do we need to lighten anything up down here along the horizon, right above where the tape is, right here with the yellow, where this, right above the tape, I want it kind of bright right there, okay? All right, so now uh, I'm going to say that I've got some Here's the flat of my brush, and I'm going to say I've got some um, sunburst. The sunburst going up from here. Just going to pull it like this and make them wider at the top. Here's my sunburst. Just dry. This is kind of kind of dry brushing it on. Here we exaggerate these a little bit. This way here too. Now that's a little brighter. Than I want. So what could I do with that? Because that's a little brighter yellow than I want. I could put a little tiny bit of orange with that. Just kind of tone that down a bit. Um, maybe even a little bit of... Let's see, I think I need mixing zinc white, which is our next... Uh, let's see, where's my zinc white on this? I bought that too. Here's some zinc white. Um, we're calling it mixing white here by Liquitex, but, but this is actually in... in um, this brand is called uh, zinc, which is your transparent white, okay? What do we do with the brush? Okay, so this is a little bit darker than I want, so I'm going to put a little bit of zinc white with that, which is more of a transparent yellow, I mean white, so that when I put this on here, I'm just going to kind of dry brush this over here. Now, let's take a little bit of yellow and red, cad red medium, make an orange, and I want the, I want the orange in between this. Barely touches, kind of just fade this back a bit. Okay, I'm going to say that there's my orange sunburst coming up here like that, okay? In the sky, because it's easier to do this now. And if I got too much um, yellow, I can just keep the brush flat and just push it back a little bit by putting a barely dragging the orange over the top of it so if it's a little bright, okay? So that's, that's what I'm saying happened there. Now, you with me? Everybody's following along. So I'm going to come up here like this on the very bottom of it and make it a little brighter. See, this is everybody's there. Okay. So now that's that's the um, should be pretty much okay as far as my um, uh, ocean goes. Now yellow and purple make a muddy brown. So if we're going to start to purple clouds and so forth, okay, um, we're going to have to not do that. But one thing we can do before that is we can say, okay. I know I want right up along here. I'm going to have a purple, um, kind of a purpley blue cloud. Now here's my yellow. This is going to go on top of it like this, and then I'm going to say up here, I want something that's going to be some sort of um, yellow cloud. Now I'm going to dry all that because I just dry it completely, and then I will go ahead. You'll barely see this. Let me have a little bit of mixing white with this too. Put a little bit of that on here too. So I want this even lighter on this one. There we go. Before you, right. before you dry, we have a question from Sherry. Yeah. What's the difference between zinc white and mixing white? Um, there really isn't much of a difference. It's minuscule. It's minuscule. The, the, the feeling with mixing white is it's part zinc, part titanium. Zinc white is a little, tri slightly a bit more translucent. There's really not a big difference between the two of them. All right, so I need to dry that before I do anything else because if I try to put the blue-green sky in here, the blue-purple sky in here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect the wet yellow. One of the things people don't do is take the time to dry. They'll, just, they'll look at a picture and say, I can do that. I don't need her help. They run off and paint it, post it up, and then I don't understand why it doesn't look like ginger's. Well, ginger takes some time to dry stuff. That's what I want you to do. Take the time to dry things. I'm going to do that now, okay? All right. John's going to mute and tell you neat stuff. Well, well, I'm going to try that, see how loud you are now. 
<laughs> hey, you do have your little baby fan. You want to try a little baby fan? I don't think for this thick of paint it would work. But here's my fan. All right, you guys, here's my fan that we found in Savannah. It goes around your neck, and it, you know, it tilts like this. So you can tilt it on the, you know, you can tilt it. And, but I thought it would be very nice when you, you, it's portable. It See? looks very quiet, too. It's very quiet. See, and now for just small stuff, it's okay. And actually, we were, then we got inspired and looked on Amazon. We'll show you those. We ordered some even better ones that are three speed <laughs> that are, looked even <laughs> better than this. We stepped up. But I like the idea. I was thinking sometimes when you're um, someplace and you're traveling, particularly as a tourist, and you're in a non-air conditioned setting, or you're like Judy sitting at home in front of the TV and you just want some personal fan stuff, you can put that right under your face. See, see that? Can you see my hair, how it's blowing? Yeah. That's work, right? So that's what this is. We found that in Savannah, and then we found some smaller ones. So I'm going to use the hair dryer because this is still wet, okay? Did you dry it at all? Did you skin it at all? Uh, kind of skinned it. It did. It's not okay. coming off on my hands. It sort right. of work. It would work certainly when we're traveling. We'll have one, right? Yeah. And, oh, John, tell them about our cruise because if you're, um, we've got a few spots left on our cruise for next. I just love how you say, it. John. Tell them about the cruise and then you proceed to say it. Bye. No, go ahead and say it. I'm just saying we have a few <laughs> spots left on our cruise for the February birthday bash. Um, in January. It sails out of Galveston, Texas, Texas. on January 27th. I'm put Brian now. Are you really? Yeah. All right, you guys are gonna have to let me know if uh, her if she's still too loud. I don't know if you can hear me during this, but we have the birthday bash cruise, the second annual. We're gonna try to do this as an annual event, and it's gonna be January twenty seventh, uh, two thousand nineteen, out of Galveston, Texas. If you want more information on that, please use the contact us on gingercooklive.com gallery okay all right so that's fun yeah that's really fun and, and really it is not a it i will bring my paints we're going to have a private um room of some kind a couple of times they said and uh, you know and an open bar cocktail party and meet and greet everybody but it has to be done if you want to participate and be in the group sit in the dining room with everybody then it's got to, you've got to go through our travel agent because she's the one that sets that up. But John and I are not making any money on this cruise. It's not a you know pay extra to see Ginger cruise. We just thought I'm you know it's my birthday. We thought you might have fun joining us. Bah, come along if you want. So and we got a nice group of people. I'm going to meet some of the artists that you've been talking to on Facebook. A lot of our friends are coming. I think you know when I say friends, a lot of my friends I've never met in person. I'm excited <laughs> to meet you. All right. So now I've got. Oh, you're you know, still my friend. Yeah, show my friends. All right, now I'm going to start with the with the purple and a little bit of ultramarine blue, okay? And I'm going to come on up here like this, maybe a little bit of mixing white because I don't want it quite that dark, a little bit darker than that. So it's sort of a combination. Let's try a little magenta with that. Oh, that's pretty. All right, we're going to come on up here like this and uh, coming across the top of the sky like that. Now, if purple is too much for you, and it can be, some people don't like colors the way I do. You can add just a tiny bit, maybe even a yellow oxide to it. That will tone it down just a bit. Will not be so, um, a little bit darker up at the top. Now here's a little bit of that translucent mixing white. And as we come down here toward the bottom, we're going to lighten up the sky. Now here's the trick. We're going to come um, down about this far, and I'm going to come this way. And you see, you barely see that yellow. Do you see that? See how you're just barely seeing that? Here's a little phthalo blue and white, mixing white. And I'm going to put a little bit of that color in here too. Leave some of the orange showing if you want. Okay, so there's that. Now, let's come along here and do another little, uh, I'm going to come barely close to this little bit of yellow line, okay? Now, the same thing under here too. I'm going to come under here like this with this cloud and say that there's this nice cloud coming this way as opposed to an unnice cloud. Now I barely want to see this line. See that? I painted that yellow but I barely want to see it. And that's my other little yellow cloud and maybe I'll put one down here like this. Now I'll show you the difference between putting the yellow first and then putting it last. Sometimes it's easier to put the yellow first. So there's our our clouds and let's take a little bit of mixing white and just put a little bit on here like that 
Uh, let me make a comment. Some of you notice that the name of this particular lesson is called the Azalea Path. That happened to be just a test name we were using for this instant live room. It will be changed to what it was on our last, for this proper lesson, it would happen to be 37 seconds long. We don't know why. Okay, so I'm lightening up this cloud right here, okay? All right, so there's my clouds. That's pretty simple. I mean, there's not a lot to this, is there? Can you think about it? No? Yes? No? And um, now I'm going to come down here with my purple and the darker colors here. Right next to, and you could have uh, re, you know, retaped it if you'd wanted to, but I think you probably will be okay. You've got almost a little edge here. One caveat: once you tape it, it's, you'll get a, it'll leave a little bit of a mark. It'll be very difficult to um, to get rid of that unless you sand it. So that that's the downside of tape. A little bit of phthalo blue here too, and a little bit of the mixing mixing white. Okay, and as we come down, we're going to get a little bit bluer. Now, I'm going to just sort of swiggle this around like that. You like that word, swiggle? It's like a that word, swiggle. Term. Swiggle, that's a word, right? Sure. As opposed to wiggle, swiggle. It's a squiggle. We're going to squiggle. Well, swiggle, as opposed to squiggle. Squiggle. Yeah. Different word. Okay. Okay, so now what do we know? Well, we've got an ocean in here because we kept our brush stroke straight. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here, this is really fun. We're going to come, I'm saying this is where I want my my tide to be, and I might come down here a little lower than that, and I'm going to just sort of follow this line here like this, okay, where my... Um, you might want to talk about the paint you're using. A lot of people are just finding us now. And All right, so if you're just finding us now, John and I were at an art store in Savannah, uh, actually at Dick Blick mortar, brick and, brick and mortar store as opposed to their online store. I have been told for years that the finest acrylics that you can buy on the planet, they're made in Japan, and they're called Holbein. And I just, I just never was anywhere anybody had them. And uh, nobody gave us these paints, but I thought it would be fun to try them. Um, they're a little bit more expensive than your normal paints. This one, for instance, was painted with our regular acrylics. These are painted with the Holbein. I don't know if you can see any particular difference yet. We'll just, we'll just, we're just doing it so you don't have to buy them. Maybe you want to buy them, maybe you don't. But um, uh, again, they're not, you know, we just thought as long as we were in the process of showing you neat stuff, we'd show you these paints. They make, they make a, an oil paint, they make a, a gouache, but these are actually the acrylic ones. All right, so this is where my, now I said, where else was I going to put some of this? Um, I was going to put some of this purple down here, and as long as I'm here, Ruth would like to know if the whole bunch of paint's worth the extra cost. Well, you know, this is the thing, Ruth. I don't know. I mean, I mean I've mean, i done a couple of paintings with them, and I can show you the difference. John thinks the colors are a bit brighter, and I've heard that the pigment quality is better. And I think that one of the things I'd heard in the past was, see how I'm doing this sort of zigzaggy thing even down here, was that even the, the manufacturers like Golden have, you know, those people have great respect for the whole bunch, that just the way they, um, the way they make their paints. Um, so I just thought it'd be fun to have some. Um, again, you're kind of seeing the colors. Um, I'm trying to do this like I did the other one. Here's a little bit of the zinc white, and I'm going to just add a few streaks in here, like this, just in the a little bit more of the mixing white here. When you're doing an ocean, you need to keep the the the, the farther things are away, everything's kind of you don't see that much. So the the mistake I see a lot of people make is they try to they do waves way back here. The farther things are away, they just sort of flat, sort of flattens out. Okay. Now, one of the things that happens on a beach is the sand gets wet and changes the color of the sand. So what I want to do is I've rinsed the purple off the brush and really rinsed it. Okay. Wiped it off on a rag. I'm going to do it until the rag kind of goes clean a little bit on me. But I see purple because purple grays yellow, so it'll gray the orange. So let's take a little bit of this yellow in uh, say magenta and make a kind of a nice orange color and let's see if we can't lighten up our beach. I'm going to kind of stay away from that a little bit. I want to lighten up the beach a bit. Now probably should have dried the, this like Russian roulette without drying the, the purple but here's a little bit more magenta and I want to just... This was painted over an orange canvas anyway so there we go. So I'm just going to say there's that. Now we've kind of lightened up the beach a bit uh, we haven't done that much, but we've, we've lightened it up just a bit. Now, I want to go ahead and put this other wave stuff in. So, um, 
let's see, what did I do with that zinc white? I put it right here. I got a question from Jules. Okay. Can Matisse acrylic ink be used for fine lines and detail work on a basic acrylic painting lesson or in conjunction with other acrylic paints? As long as it's waterproof, it can be. Uh, Golden I like. I just bought this at, um, I bought this at, um, a Dick Blick too. This is a golden fluid, and I didn't have a. I love the white, but I didn't have a dark brown. So, so this is Van Dyke. Dyke dark brown, and I got that for tree limbs and stuff. So yeah, you can sure do stuff like that. I looked for a dark all, all brown. Can, can live together. Yeah, I looked. Uh, I looked for a dark brown Posca and couldn't find one. Not as dark as you wanted. No, so I'm going to come up here like this and lighten this up a little bit through here, just a little bit like that. Okay, then we're going to dry stuff. And I'm now I'm looking at this. This is fun. This has all been dry, right? So if I take my mixing white and a little bit of that yellow. Okay, remember I told you I wanted to do a little bit more with the sun, sun rays. Now look, I can come up here like this. And um, dry, dry brush over that. Look how cool that is. Let me kind of dry brush over the rest of that. Give you a sense of depth. Ones yeah, in front, I think it's sort of behind. pretty, right? And then this, if this is dry enough, I can go ahead and take the white. This is titanium now, because I'm going to say that this is my little bit of white and yellow. I'm going to put my sun back. It seems like I erased it somehow. It's all right. This is where my sun goes sideways. Then right underneath it, skipping a space. If you don't skip a space, you can always just um, come back with some thin blue lines. Okay, and come down here like this. And as I come into my beach, I'm going to just keep doing the lighter yellows, keeping them pretty straight. Okay, kind of, I want a straight line under here like this. Okay, so as long as I'm doing that, that I almost need to reshape that brush. It's not getting me a thin enough edge. Here's a little tiny bit of white. This is not going as thin as I want because I think this brush older. Let's try a different brush. I'm going to tell you what, if your brushes don't make a thin line, then time to get a new one. See, I, I want some really, look how thin these are. See the difference? And that's because this is a newer brush and the edge, get a better edge. Okay, so that being said there, going to do that. Now, remember I told, I told you I'd show you a trick with your brushes. We said that, right? All right, so here's just an extra little canvas here, okay? Now, if I want to create um, like an edge on my canvas, I might put white on one side. Let's say, let's just do some blue on the other, okay, of the brush. Now, ready? Um, let me just draw a little line here. So what I do is I take the brush like this, and I bend it. I t push it, and I bend it. Can you f focus in on this? I think so. Now, and I shake it, and do you see how the blue's in the back, but the white on the other side of the brush is leaving that little edge? I mean, that's way cool, isn't it? Come on, that's way cool. Got that, you guys, it's way cool, yes? Very cool. Okay, so here's like a little, here's like a little um, light blue on one side. Now, the side of since I'm right-handed, right, uh, I'm going this way. Since I want the the this side of the brush. To, now, here we go. All right, now I've got the white. Here's another one. Kind of pulling down. Now, here's I've got more white, and I'm laying this kind of almost this thick line of white, and I'm sort of shaking my hand hand a little bit. You come under here and you just got this thin line and then you come behind it and you can paint it out. Does that make sense? You can even come with another color and paint it out, but you've got that thin line. So that's one of the, that's a really good trick. It works with clouds. Here it is, just the white. Now see, I push it and then bend it down and shake it. And even if you just have white, you can come underneath the, the, that and then paint it out. Okay, let's do it again. Gives you little waves. It gives you the little waves. It gives you that sort of that those little that little foamy stuff that happens, right? Here's some white, kind of come down, bend it, and then shake it, and drag that extra color 
Can you see that? It practices on something. See how it gives you that extra little stuff? Which is, would be kind of tricky to get. So that's what we're doing here. Um, that's what we're doing here. Now again, if you've just joined us, we're playing with uh, Holbein paints. And this, this, the, the sample was done with just regular acrylics. So I want to, I kind of want those, um, kind of those blue colors on one side of my brush, white on the other. I want to come along here like this and just put, no, well, let's just put the first one in. Okay. Now I might come back behind it with a little bit, sort of fill this in. I don't want any purple in here, but I might fill this in with some other colors back here on my water, like that. There Jennifer goes. would like to know, can the azulurian be used instead of magenta? Alizarin crimson is, um, no, it's a wine red. Magenta is actually an artificially made color, but I think for, for sunsets it doesn't really matter. If you never had magenta, you'd be fine for a sunset. I mean, it's nice, you could use different reds. Try alizarin crimson, might be nice. But it's more of a wine red as opposed to magenta. Let me show you. When you put a little white with magenta, this is what you get. You see this beautiful pink? And I don't know that you need that color in anything, particularly. It's just pretty, okay? Like if I put a little bit more of that pink color in here like this, because I think it's pretty. And, you know, you can put it up in the sky. But, I mean, do you need it? I don't know. Um, don't really like what I just did there, but that's okay. That's why we have acrylics. So we can take it off, right? Here we go. Let's just put a little bit of red back up in here like that. So yeah, so you're, you're um, you know, so you can come back here with some red and kind of break your sky up too if you got it too crazy, right? So, all right, so now, um, get that off the brush. Now, usually what happens underneath a, underneath a wave like this, like this, we're going to just, we're going to put some blue underneath here like this, okay? And we'll do another layer of this. We'll do some Halo blue and yellow and white make a really pretty turquoise green, you know, um, turquoise color. So here's my white on top of that here. I'm going to come along here and just lay down another layer of color. Take all the paint off my brush. This is a little wet, but we'll do it here. See how, see how it wants to, it absolutely wants to pull that white down here. If you bend it and to drop it down, it wants to do the white. You can see you can see how that's working, can't you? So kind of maybe ultimate a little blue on this side, a little white on this side. Here's the front one. It's just a matter of bending the brush. Now let's um if you want to say the water's shallow, you'd leave it more orange here in the front. And if you're wanting to say it's a little bit deeper, then see, when it just, I want darker colors behind the light color. Does that make sense? So like that. There we go. It's just something like this. A little bit of darker colors back here. Uh, and you can do it again. If you don't get it right the first time, just dry it and give it a second shot. Just, you know, give yourself a shot to do it again. I want this a little bit darker under here. Like that. And if you don't like it the first time, just go ahead and put it back. Here, here I can go ahead and still do this. There it is, like that. See your little waves? Now the secret to waves, now here's the thing. You do want this purple um, underneath it, you know, that sort of purpley color. You want that shadow underneath it, so this is why I did it the first time. But I can come under here like that and say I wanted this little shadow underneath this wave. All right, like that, and I want a little bit of cad red medium and dazzling purple, um, a little yellow maybe. Th these are very strong colors, I will say that. The pigments are really strong on them, okay? Um, let's try some mixing white with that. Mm, I want a little bit more of a purpley rust color, okay? Here's my darker sand. This is my wet sand color, okay? What I'm going for here is saying this is the wet sand. It's almost a rust brown color. And I'm saying that that's my wet sand. Where the tides come in, you know how it comes in and goes back out? Like that. That's kind of cool, right? 
Now, what can I do up here? One thing I can do is I can take a little of this um, mixing white, which is not so bright. Let's try it again on the brush, both sides. Now, I just want to, I'm going to do, do a few little lighter ones here, just barely touch it. You don't have to have that many, okay? Your tide's coming in. Leave that off like that. So I mean, you don't have to have rows and rows of these, but if you want to increase it, like for instance, if I wanted to say this one was, was brighter here, right, like this, maybe in this place, right? You can come back and redo them. You just have to put the blue behind them. Does that make sense? Then you have to kind of erase some of the white. That's how you get that sort of neat. I think that's a neat look anyway. I don't know if you guys like it, but I think it's a neat look. You can, you know, get that. Make sure you take it all the way off the canvas like that on both sides. And I like the little bit of the yellow-orange color kind of peeking in here someplace like that. All right, so let's put a little bit of our orange here back here in our sunset, too. A little bit maybe brighter reds in here. See how much brighter the colors are? They absolutely are brighter, John. That's what I thought. The painting we did last night, even this morning, it looks a lot brighter. It's brighter, okay? It's brighter. Okay, it definitely is. See, what happened to you here? I don't know what happened to that one. We'll fix it. Okay, so now we've got that, and I want to take a little bit of this light color here and suggest a puddle coming this way. Like that. Maybe there's a little puddle here. A little bit of a, a, a zinc white on top of it. Um, I had some blue on the brush. Here we go. The, the zinc white is very translucent. So I don't want to say too much about it, but there it is. <laughs> just very translucent. There. Yeah, you don't have anything to say about it. No, I mean it's just there. I mean I just want to suggest that it's there, and if it's too much, then I'll put, you know, get a little yellow, maybe a little yellow oxide. Put a little bit of this. Wow. All right. What happened there is that I had water in the brush, and I didn't get it all wiped off. If you do not wring out your brush, you'll end up with water in the perf in the fennel part, and it'll drop water on your canvas. Did you know that? I did know that. Yes. I've seen you do it quite often. Well, it happens a lot. You've got to really wipe this stuff off, right? So here, I want to put a little bit more of this gold here. Hey, like we'd that. like to thank Miss Brooke for the donation. And she says, how can you donate so it goes further? You can use our PayPal system. Uh, the moderator should have a link up there for you shortly. Uh, YouTube takes 30% and PayPal takes 3%. So we th thank you. Listen, this really helps us, you know, because like I say, you know, I know there's a lot of our other friends on YouTube that are somehow, you know, sneaking all this stuff for free. I don't like how this one's going up, so I'm going to change it. See how I'm see, I've got this one here? I'm going to move it down a little bit. Um, do you remember the name of the mat you're using? Who that is? It's Oliver? Ken Oliver or something? Oh, yeah. This is the best mat ever. Um, now that you can see too much of it today, but it's under there. It's a gray yeah. roll-up I'm going to say... Nothing sticks to it, yeah, even nothing. tape. Nothing sticks to it, even tape. I can't get anything to stick to it. No. It is great. They make two different sizes. Uh, we have an affiliate link to our Amazon, and the gals might be able to locate that for you. Um, can you use this technique for snow? Um, well, you could use it for clouds. You want to see it done on a cloud? No, I'm asking about for snow. I don't think so. I don't know how you'd use it for snow. I don't think it would help. Unless maybe you were putting it like on a like a fence post, you know, when you have a post and you need to have some snow drifting down and kind of, yeah. So I suppose anywhere you, you know, try it on anything. Here, here it is. Um, let's just get you some clean yellow here. Here it is for the, um, makes me wish I would bought some more colors now. But here, here, here it is. Um, I'm going to just show you, say, like, for instance, I like, when you have a sun, sunset like this, right? Okay, and I want it a little bit brighter up here, and let's, let's just, there we go. All right, when you have something like this, oftentimes the bottom of the clouds will be... Oh, to reflect that light. Will reflect that light, and you can come along here like this and do it underneath the clouds, okay? Same thing underneath it but then you would have then you would come back with your 
purple and come right down to it so you barely see it. So you have a thin line. Yeah. You barely see it. And that's, that's a kind of a, it's a sort of an interesting thing. You know, how do you get really thin lines on stuff? That's certainly one way to do it. Okay. Here's a, here's a question that some people, which I noticed last night, but are the paints that Ginger's currently using wetter or less structured than the Matisse structure that Ginger normally uses? They're a little softer. For instance, you know, when I'm doing this, um, let's, let's, just, let's get a canvas here that we can play with. Want to do a little play real quick? Since you want to know, because, you know, these are expensive before you buy them, right? And we don't have an affiliate link or anything like that. We're just telling you what they were because I've been dying to try them. Um, Cinnamon got some for free one time, and she promised she'd let me have it too, but I never saw it. So here we go. <laughs> oh, so, so we had to buy our own. We had to buy our own. Okay, so here, here it is. Here's, oh, here's over something dark brown like that, right? There's dark brown. Now let's find um, let's find cad yellow medium in the in, in the in the, in the uh, you know here here it is in the Matisse. So I mean, similar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're similar. I mean, they're similar. I'm sorry, they're similar. I mean, if anything, the Matisse looks like it covers a little bit more. Let's try it again to be fair, right? Here's theirs. Okay. Here's Matisse. Now, for me, the Matisse is brighter. I don't know about you. Well, it looks like the Matisse is also covering better. The Matisse is, uh, yeah, it's covering. Is it's it less thicker? I think the Matisse is a thicker the, paint. The, the Matisse is slightly thicker. Because so. on the um, Holbein, it looks like you're thinned it. You know, it, it just goes on thinner. Yes. And it would probably take two coats to do it. Yes. So that's uh, that's absolutely right. So let's see. Let's do a second coat on this. Yeah. So then it's brighter. Two yeah. coats and it's brighter. Well, here's an example we can show you real quick. Let's just let this dry for a second because I want to finish all the yellows. Kind of a nice start, though, don't you think? Um, let me show you all the yellows. Last night, I did, uh, I filmed this video uh, from for our, our VLL lesson. Um, then the original lesson was, not, it's not this one, where is it? It should be, I thought it was in front of you. Where is it? It wasn't, well, there's this one. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay, I got it, I got it. All right, so this is a lesson that's coming up in our video on our, our, our Art Academy channel. Don't you love this? It's called, you know, Behind the Barn. Behind okay? the Barn. All right, so I filmed this one on using regular uh, acrylics that we always use. The and Matisse. then last night in the Matisse, and last night we uh, went ahead and we filmed this on, I not only show you in the video how to uh, enlarge a painting. This is 11 by 14. Here it is, Okay. And here's the painting larger, which I think is, I love this picture, okay? But see now, how brighter this, it is? And this is the Holbein uh, down here. And this is the... Um, Matisse on top. Matisse on top. And I feel like like these blues are a bit brighter here and the stuff. I think the colors. So maybe if you were just going to buy some, you might want to buy the, the flower colors, like the reds and the oranges, you know, just for accent colors. Or maybe this this is ultramarine blue and a little dazzling purple. And I feel like these are a little brighter than those. I mean, this is subtle stuff. And they did, it did paint very nicely. And incidentally, this is sort of fun. This one was done on a, on a red underpainting, this painting. And this one was done on a blue underpainting. Can't really see the difference, can you? So you would really think the blue would be a duller. I mean, you'd think. Yeah. So, you know, anyway, so... But so both paints are very opaque and not letting the background... Yeah, so both paints are good, um, but sometimes it's not. You know, sometimes you just want to give yourself a gift. Like, you know, I want the, I want the best. I want what people say are the very best in the world. You know, so maybe you want to own that. I don't know. And um, let's see. I almost got a little paint on this. We were happily doing that. I don't know if happy is the right word. Okay, so we're back to our painting. I just thought it was sort of fun to show you that. Isn't that cool? And that'll be coming up. That's our VLL. A lesson for this week. Uh, it's kind of well. How many hours was it, John? Uh, three. It was like three-hour lesson, and um, so that's coming up. Um, 
and we'll, we'll let you guys know. And also our Wave and Water Masterclass will you be released. Show that? That's behind you. All right, so this one. Not that way, other way. Oh, not that way. Where? Oh, yeah, where? Here? Yes. You'd have to really zoom out to see this. Well, I, I, I can do that. I have a Zoomer today. All right, so now this one is our Wave and Water Masterclass, and look how much bigger the canvas is, all right? That's a 1620 canvas. 16 by 20, the Masterclass, done on the easel. This was shot on our easel, my electric easel. And, and that's four and, I, and a half hours. That's like a four and a half hour lesson, huge lesson. Uh, really cool. I really like it. It's, um, again, inspired by our travels, and I think you guys would really enjoy doing that if you're not a Wave and Water Masterclass member. So we have some great videos. One of the advantages of being a member of our Art Academy is that's the only place on the, in the world I know of where if you don't live right next door to me, you can get personal art coaching. At a reasonable price. At a reasonable price. And, and um, I'm happy to say that's open again. And it's open again. We had a few people uh, find it's that they just... It's summertime. We get a lot of people that just, that, you know, they just kind of, they got busy, they can't paint right now. And the thing is that once they drop out, they've lost their spot as far as their art, art coaching goes. And so we've got a few spots uh, available if somebody wants to join and um, uh, take advantage of that now. That's a good time to join our Art Academy because you're guaranteed, if you never drop your membership, you're guaranteed the art coaching and the price you sign in at forever, okay? Ever and ever. Ever and ever. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and, fin and just work on this a little bit as we're talking. Um, one of the things we've done, if, if you guys are new to that, when you say personal art coaching, how does that work? Well, how it works is this. Um, you take a photograph. Please make it straight on of your <laughs> picture. Don't cut cattywampus it. Um, and for those of you that don't, have that as an English word. <laughs> Cattywampus means crooked. It's slang for crooked. I don't know where it came from because I have no idea. But called. anyway, please try to keep it a little straighter, right? And anyway, what we do, okay, is we, um, uh, we you send me your artwork, and then what I do is I take it in the computer, and I, I actually do a video recording of me and you with your artwork, and you and I have this conversation like I'm standing right next to you. And, and you don't feel bad if you talk back to her as you're watching the video. Yeah, you, most you, people do. You know, and you can save the video. That's yours forever. You can download it because we post it up on a private channel on YouTube. So then you can then put it in your playlist. And, and even if you drop out of the academy, you never have to lose that, um, uh, that personal art coaching video as long as you put it on your, your part of the channel. See, I'm kind of darkening this under here. Is that kind of nice? So we got a little bit more. Now, uh, now you might want to suggest some people send in their. Don't wait till your painting's done. Yeah, some people wait and say, "I've been working on this for three months, and oh gosh, can you do something?" Listen, <laughs> send it, if you're sketching it out and you're not sure, just send it to me quick, and I'll go. Yay! I'll, I might be a fast email back from you going. Yep, keep going, right? Or, or it might wait, be, wait, 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 stop, do this, yeah. do, do, stop, please do this. And um, also, once a month, you can send me an original piece. What want, we do. We, we do not do uh, art coaching on any other uh, YouTube art artist, whether it's my daughter or anybody else. If you saw it on YouTube from somebody else, then they can art coach you if they want, but we don't do it. But if you have, you know, but if you found, maybe you just found a picture you thought was pretty on Pinterest. You know, I may not be able to teach it, but, um, you know, if you're painting it for your own personal use, I can certainly tell you how to paint it. So pretty much you can, you know, your shopping list is huge. Okay, <laughs> that's a nice way to put it, right? If you if you're inspired by something that you want to paint, I'm gonna get that rid of that little bit there a little but bit. Basically, the bottom line is don't wait until the painting's done. Yeah, don't wait till the painting's done, you guys. Don't wait till the painting's done. Then that's that's this cuckoo. So all right, I'm gonna just finish these um, these lines here, and um, uh, what else did we find? Oh, John and I found discovered. You want to know something cool? Yeah. I'm telling you what, John and I always learn stuff on our trip, and there was this comedian. Oh. oh my gosh, this was now, so funny. The whole funny. world's going to know this. I know. I'm, well. I'm, you guys are going to know. You can, you'll know stuff because you've watched this that other people don't know. Isn't this cool? Now, right where, where it's, um, do you see right where it's, uh, the, the, the yellow might be catching it over that white. I will add that, that yellow right there on the waves. Do you see what I did? Just add a little bit of that yellow and orange on the waves. How That's much way do cool. these paints cost compared to golden and liquid tech? Do you think they're about 20% higher? Yeah. They're about 20% higher. But they come from Japan. I don't and and they're and then if you look up how they're made, I mean they're 
they're quite something how they make them. Okay. I mean, that's for sure. They're just... Um, Oh, here's another question. Sometimes my pain is so bad, I don't think I don't want to send it to Ginger. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. If it's you know, because that's I may see that that's why you've got me. That's why you paid me the big bucks to do this. And just, you know, for under thirty dollars a month to get personal art coaching once a week for me, that's huge. You know how much it costs in person just to you know have well, an yeah, art we, thing. We did a survey. Everything you know, come the first of the year, we make follow this guy's suit. He charges for a three month. I think you have five paintings. One thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. That's what he charges, and we're charging you thirty. I mean, it's unbelievable. People can't believe what we do here. A little bit orange here, and kind of, you know, kind of jazz that up here. Isn't that pretty? So yeah, no. Um, see how I'm just kind of dragging the the orange over this too, over the purple. Um, as we're talking, it's a great deal. Now here's the thing: if you send me something and it's really awful, and sometimes that, you know, I'm going, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Deep breath here. Where do I start? <laughs> Where do I start? Sometimes I have to say, you know what? Put this painting aside. I want you to do these lessons, learn this technique. The best thing we've gotten so far this year, the most exciting thing we've done is the Back to Basics Series 1 downloadable Own It Forever 24 lesson video on basic brush strokes. You need to do know to do all the complicated things. But here's the thing, friends. What I've discovered, and, and absolutely am so thrilled was if I go through personal art coaching, I say, okay, fix this one thing, and you do it. Then I might come back, and I have hopes, and I'll go, okay. Let's try well, this. <laughs> what if you did this? Huh? And you did it, because I've explained it, and I actually take it into a painting program and go right over your picture, which you wouldn't want me to do in real life, and tell you exactly how you do it. Then you go do it, and we have seen paintings go from, what was that oh, to, amazing. that is the most amazing thing and beautiful thing I've ever seen. This takes the learning curve off of learning to paint. You know, everybody says, well, I don't, can't afford $30 a month. I promise you, you waste $70 a month just on paintings that aren't working out. And if, you know what? We want you to sell the artwork from our lessons and from our YouTube lessons. And if you want people to buy them, they really ought to look nice. Don't you think so? <laughs> and, oh, and, that's a subtle way. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that you're in a competition on YouTube and everywhere else. For Everybody else wants their paintings sold, too. So what can you do? Well, one of the things you can do, okay, to, to, to cause that to happen is to have, um, uh, you know, to, to have a professional look at your paintings and say, this is great, but if you did this. And even if you're really good, having another set of eyes say, gosh, I love that. Oh, my gosh, one lady, I think it's Kathy Evans. I think that was her name. I think so. What's it? Was oh, she the one with the dog? Around. Throwing out names. Was she the one that did the dog? It wasn't oh, you, I'm Kathy. Not sure. I don't know. We had this one lady did a got a commission for a portrait of a dog. I'm telling you what, it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. That should sold for $500. She, yeah, she that sold this person for $89. I said, this painting, uh, should, you should charge an arm and a leg for that. It was so well done. And someone else said, yeah, she should charge a paw and a, an ear <laughs> a or something. A paw and a tail. A paw and a tail. <laughs> but whatever it was is that sometimes just getting validation that you're on the right path and that you are really knocking out of the park. I'm happy to do that too. And then we have another one. We've added a new button to our video thing saying, I'm just sharing this. Don't want any art critiques, but I'm having a bad day. I could use an art hug. And maybe you have anything nice to say, I would help, it would help me feel better about the day. And I'm happy to give art hugs too. We, we're happy to do that because sometimes you are having it. But John was having a terrible day. Um, shall I tell a little story on John? No. No, 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 no. no, no. Let's, let's, not even, let's not go there. Okay, but he was having a bad day, and he definitely needed an art hug yesterday. See how I've got these? Don't you love how this... How hey, this Martha says, Ginger, your computer skills on the pack lessons are awesome. Thanks, Martha. Oh, no, 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 really, Martha, you, you need to see what she's doing over there, pushing wrong buttons. I, that one time you were trying to do... What are you doing? You wanted to do an outline or something? You kept doing the text box? Oh, and I, John showed me a new thing. I didn't even know this. Uh, we, I used to snag it all the time, and apparently there was a button called Magnify. It's never even... Who reads the directions to this stuff? So who has time for that? So <laughs> it'll magnify and show a big area. And one of the things I love to do is that when I'm, when I'm doing personal art coaching with you guys, I love to take you shopping. So I'm going, okay, so where, where was your reference photo for this? Well, that's okay, but what if we did this? And then we go up to Google Images, and we go shopping for reference photos, and I show you how to do that. And, um, you know, back in the day, 
Did you love that? I don't know where that fresh spring from, but back in the day, back, back when I was day. back when I was in my twenties, what they had you do is you had a filing cabinet and you went through old magazines from the beauty shop or wherever you were. That's how old it was. We used to call them beauty shops then, not salons. <laughs> and and you tore out pictures of sunsets and you had categories, sunsets, animals, cows, whatever. And then when you were painting something, you had to rifle through these pictures. Now we have the internet. You don't need any of that stuff. Yeah, it's for the comfort great. of your little for, cushy the, chair. Everybody used to save all their National Geographics, you know? Oh, yeah. That, that was the ma main thing. You know, that's how they, they probably sold more National Geographics to artists. And then they went around saying, if you paint any of these pictures, we'll kill you. Uh, <laughs> but I think a lot of artists bought those, right? Um, but now, uh, oh, don't, we're almost done with this. Doesn't this look nice? I like the bright colors. Do you guys like the bright colors? I like the bright colors. I think we need some more bright yellow right there. What do you guys think? Right oh, there? I, I would do that, definitely. Def definitely a little bit of bright yellow right there. We just tap that on there. Just, I think I need a smaller brush. That was the thing. Sometimes I should take a video of Ginger doing a pack so you can see how she struggles with the computer, and you guys just don't get to see it. Well, listen, I'm pretty good at it. Just yeah, listen. you are. I'm pretty good at it. Just compared to you know, where you were. Yeah, listen, we're, everybody's learning something. Always. But the video packs have made a huge difference in a progress. This is like. Oh, um, it's night and day. Some of the stuff I, you know, even I get to look on some of the stuff, I, and I, it is just amazing. She goes, "This is where they started. And this is where they ended up." And I go, "That's the same person." Yeah, and she this goes, is, yeah, but this three is what, packs later. But she, Ginger, keeps working. I, I will work with you for five packs if I think that there's something. You know, if, sometimes you're just over it, put it away, just do something else. You did pretty well, but sometimes we can take you to such a level that you don't believe it. It's unbelievable, and you know, um, you again, you can keep them and refer back to that stuff because you know it's your own per personal private art lesson on your piece. When I was a well, I, remember, I think I started painting acrylics when I was 17, and I was 18 living in Aspen, and there was this German artist that came to town, and everybody, we were invited to a party where he was at. He was some, some big deal, forgotten what his name was, but I was so excited to meet him, and I was painting, and I said, can you I paint, can you come see my stuff? I, I literally, I can't believe I had the nerve to do this. I, oh, it's cute, at, you know, 18. I drug him home. <laughs> To my house. You drug him home. I met you really drugged him and took him. Home. You drugged hand. him and brought him to your house to look at my artwork, and I wanted some help. I wanted to say, what should I do? Right? I mean, that's how excited I was to meet someone that was that good that could tell me. I promise you, this is the deal, you guys. This is the bomb. This is the bomb. This is the bomb. Did to you go just with say the drug that, professor, painter? Yeah. So, all right. So I'm liking that too. I think I make a little little um. A little bit of this up here like that. I just I love exaggerating this stuff, don't you? You, you want to really drive, huh? The girls have got a, you guys, anybody have the link to the back to basics? I guess I could yeah, you guys, you want that back to basic stuff. And I'm telling you what. And um, here's a little yellow here, just on the top of this. This is where you want the brightest yellow coming up from your sun right up in here like this. This is where you want it. Okay, like that. You really want that. Um, um, then you put a little bit of um, orange in between it. The secret is you have the orange in between um, that just kind of defines the rays here like that. You want that bright orange, that bright red in between it. I just put the link into the back to basics. It's over on our gingercookondemand.com website. Yeah, so that's what that's what you want to do. So there's our. Um, um, and you feel like you won the lottery when you send one, and Ginger really likes it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sometimes you guys, I'm telling you what. That sometimes I'm so amazed by what you come up with, and you can't. You know, I can teach you a technique. I can't teach you a good idea. And we get some people that have some of the best ideas. Uh, but really, speaking literally. of ideas, when you do original pieces, don't write in and say. It was in my head. We don't care. Ginger, I can't do me. anything within your head. It's like going to the hairdresser and trying to tell them how you want your hair without a photo. You want a bad haircut, do that. <laughs> you know, those are the lessons you learn early on. Well, I just want to look like Julia Roberts. Well, we all want to look like her, you know. Get over it. <laughs> just, just, I just want to paint like you. And I just had this a dream. You know what? Hmm. <laughs> Find some reference photos that are kind of like the dream. Find some other artists that maybe have painted your dream. Find something. Let's give us something else to go on. Yeah? Yes Just and don't yes? Just say it came from my head because, you know, honestly, we cannot read minds. Ginger's good, but she's not that good. 
All right, so there we go, you guys. That's our that's our sunset. I think it came out kind of good. I got this a little carried away with this one. I'm going to tone that down. I have never been to a paint and sip. I don't think I could stand their cheap paint that I have heard people talk about. Well, it was cheap paint. I did that for seven years teaching people, drunk people to paint, really, <laughs> honestly. And I got, you know, you get a room full of 30 people, and half the people wanted to learn to paint, and the other half just didn't care, right? They just, uh, one lady got so drunk, she just face planted right in her... <laughs> Her paper plate. That's so funny. <laughs> we had one. One of our instructors did that too. Isn't that terrible? One of yeah, our instructors yeah, that's, that's did that good. too. She was teaching. You know, our our my boss thought he could just hire anybody to do this. That you could put a quarter in, get an artist out, kind of thing. Isn't that funny? Well, that's an expression of cinnamons. What do you think? You can put a quarter in and get an artist out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. You know, and I mean, he thought that. I'm just kind of playing with this a little bit because I got, I, I was talking to you and kind of messed it up. All right, see how every, all can be fixed. That's all cool, right? All cool. I love it. So now let's do a, let's do a, one of the 10 minute paintings like this. I'm going to just uh, lighten up the yellow here again. A couple Another places. Another 10 minute painting like this? Well, what, this You're going to do, do this painting that you've taken an hour in and did it in 10 minutes? No, I'm saying doing another 10 minute painting, but the size. We didn't do the first one yet. No. Good observation, <laughs> Sherlock. <laughs> Just he's, trying to keep up with you. <laughs> he's right right on, baby. You're right on. Oh, we never told you about what the common comedian said. We get oh, yeah. So well, that's, yeah, that's a cliffhanger. You have to come in to next, tomorrow to get the answer to that. <laughs> so here's what, the, here's what the comedian said, right, which was sort of cool, right? And here's what he said. He said... Um, he was talking about elevators, right? And he was saying that on a cruise ship, what happens is that people are so moronic, they get on the elevator and don't know where they're going. They're on the wrong end of the ship and so forth. So he says, you people, get a grip. Don't get on until you know where you're going, you know? I mean, there's big <laughs> signs everywhere, you know? But then he said, do you guys know? And then they don't know if they're going up or down. He says, now, this I can't believe because every elevator dings once or twice. If you notice when it lands, it goes ding or ding, ding. And at, uh, this is global. And why it does that, it's two, for, two dings for down and one ding for up. And they do that for the blind so that they know how to get on an elevator. No, oh. so they know how to get on the right elevator. The right elevator. elevator. <laughs> so they, what did you say? I don't think, that didn't make any sense. Really? <laughs> how do you come up with this stuff? Okay. Anyway, I didn't know that. I can't believe I lived all these years and never knew it. We started asking other people. No one else ever heard this either. I've heard the elevators ding, but never knew that was some sort of secret code. But you'll for, be happy to know that entire ship knew it before we left. Yeah, we told everybody because <laughs> we, we were excited. All right, there's our painting. I like it. I'm going to stop oh, here. Here's a good question. What's the longest 10-minute painting ever done? I <laughs> think it was like 38 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, incidentally, this is what we're going to be doing tomorrow night. So um, 7.30 p.m. 7, 10, Central. And this is uh, from our trip in uh, Costa Rica. When we went to Costa Rica. No, that'd be Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, I lied. Puerto Rico. <laughs> and um, yes, and what know. kind of flower is that? Ginger? This is a ginger flower. <laughs> All right? So the background oh. is sort of dark uh, dark purple. Okay, so anybody wants to know? That's the ginger flower. Sort of dark purple. It's some mm -hmm. sort of dark purple. I think I originally had a... It looks like an orange. I think I had an orange background, and then I painted it dark. But you could start with dark. It would work fine. Or you could start with orange and then do dark. I, I think you're getting the idea. It doesn't really matter, aren't you? <laughs> so we have all these extra little... Um, um, Canvai. Canvas that we do, right? That we do. Well, John does. <laughs> John does. Okay. That, that'd be the royal we. So I hope you enjoyed painting this. I mean, and then now let's, let's just put them together. Um, uh, Bright-wise, color-wise, what do you feel? Do you feel like well, this Well, we can't really see them. Hold on. Don't, don't touch them. i got to zoom out a little bit. And yeah, zoom out, around. right? Yeah, let's, let's just look and see what, oh, what you I think. Oh, I think the whole is a lot brighter. It is brighter. Okay, it is so brighter. it is nice, isn't it? Wow. I don't know. I, I might have to be a convert on this one. Yeah, it's very nice paint. I wasn't, I wasn't happy with their big tube of zinc white. Well... Um, because yeah, it's separated, but then I've had Matisse do that too on their flows, and I think it's the long just the travel that comes so far. But that is nice paint, isn't it? So for those of you who are just saying, you know what I want for Christmas, Dad? I want to, Holbein I want a paints. set of Holbein paints and try them out. <coughs> and then you know you can mix them. 
So you could just get the colors that, you know, appeal to you. Like, for instance, you know, your reds and maybe some yellows and oranges or something. You know, get those colors. Maybe I like the, the turquoise, though. Don't you like the blue? I like all the blues. Yeah, the Pretty blues in here. Great. And, I, and I this works. Here's why this works. <laughs> the hands. See? Turquoise is opposite orange. So when you throw those in a painting together, you put the orange and the turquoise, it just really does a nice color trick. Okay? That's what you're doing. You're sort of, you know, playing with that. So anyway, there we go. Ooh. Why does my horizon line look crooked? It's just going downhill. It's not supposed to go downhill. I measured. You all saw. We measured. Well, the way I, I wasn't going to say anything, because I certainly would have gotten a ruler out and measured it. Well, at that point, I had a ruler, but I mean, I have a T-square. It doesn't really matter, as long as it's one part straight. All right, so let's see. What happened here? Here it is. Why don't you measure it from the bottom or the top? Let's do it turn, from the top. Let's the do it from the, the top. Way, turn, turn the ruler the other way. Hmm. Measure down. Oh. Oh, see. Ooh. 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 But that's good. See, but I saw it, right? Here we go. Now. So. I saw it, and this can be fixed, and you too can fix yours. Because <laughs> if you painted along, yours too would be crooked. See, perfect. See? That's all it takes to fix something. You know, don't you love it? That's all it takes. But notice those things, you know, don't wait till last minute. Because you, know, you don't want your ocean to drain out. No. That'd be bad, right? Especially if it had a sailboat in it. It would really be a goner. Yeah. Though I do like some, the, some of that blue cloud. I'll tell you what I liked was I liked that soft blue cloud up in there. Didn't you like that soft blue cloud? Which one? Which one where? This one. Up here, the soft blue purple cloud up here. This one up here. Oh, yeah. I just want to break Where you up had this. a little purple and a little blue. Yeah, a little yeah. purple, a little bl bl blue. I just, I kind of like that myself, right? Even if it was a little bit, um, even if we toned it down and just did, I just wanted a, just something, you know, just subtle, right? But I did like that, a little bit of cloud. Up. I just think it needed that myself. Well, it's a personal preference as far as paints go. Some will like the... Matisse better or gold? I mean, it's what you like and what you yeah. can afford. Apparently, well, Blix has the same price for Golden and Holbein. Do they? Yep. Somebody just checked. Oh, good. That was a good checker, right? Yeah. I'm going to just darken this line right under here. Okay. And see, it just, just see how nicely the, the ocean just sort of flows? Here's Here it is with the... It flows and it's not falling off the page. Yeah, yeah. And then see, I want that little bit of, um, see, so flatten out the paint. Here's the trick. You get the white and you, you I just want it on the inside here. And I'm going to just lay that down again. And then take the blue behind it and make it thin. Zigzag it in there. Little tricks. You can go back and you know t touch all kinds of stuff up, right? Absolutely cool. can. And it just it just takes a minute, and you'll see me do that. You know, see, see, see what I have to do here, just straighten something out. Can do that. And I like the I like a little bit of the orange showing through in here in the ocean. I think it's very nice. And then also you want to take, you can break up here. See, you wouldn't want a big glob of paint on your brush like that. You, so that's why you always see me flatten out the brush. And um, maybe wipe it off if I've got a punk on the heel of it. And then, I, for instance, if I wanted to even get the lines a little thinner here, I might break this up yeah, just a bit better. more like that. You take a small brush. When you had that furry brush. Yeah, it just didn't, didn't work as well. But you can break that up. And see, it makes for a very nice, um, I think, very nice. Um, uh, then you can come back with a little brush and do a few little tiny accents of brighter yellow, right? Like that in a couple places. There. All right. Sorry. I'll quit playing with it. But anyway, that's what you do. That's how you paint this. Great fun. All right. So moving on. So we have any questions while we're um, doing um, our giveaway here? I don't think so. No. Wow. No. Well, that's always good. Oh, before we get too far, we're going to do this, but... Oh, I um, hope you know that is not one of my backgrounds. 
Well, this one, no, probably not. Um, <laughs> before we get too far, if you haven't, we had a terrible, um, when we showed this picture, I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. When we showed this, uh, oh, this second, tutorial when we left, this was one of the tutorials we did when we left, we, had a t we didn't have a good photograph of it. So we've changed, the, you changed the thumbnail, right, John? Roger, roger. He's got the new thumbnail. But look, these were designed to go together. You already saw this one. We had this a few months ago. And then when you can do pairs, this is a great thing. And this is a, if you haven't seen this video, this is a really good video. And you can, and try to do them both at the, if you haven't done them at all, try to do them both at the same time. And this makes a really nice um, pair. And if, particularly if you're selling things, people like to buy pairs. You know, they hang them both somewhere on a wall in a room. Very nice. You could do these a little bigger if you wanted. I think they're nice. Also, if you did them smaller, they'd be a nice greeting card. You know, if you're going to send that to somebody. So just wanted to show you those in case you hadn't seen it. Um, let's see, let's see, where did uh, I go Ginger, with this? What do you think about the, the pores people are doing as abstract art these days? Um, you know, pores are fun. I've got a video on, on YouTube, I think, on how to do pores, or it's on our academy. Maybe it's on our academy on how to do, how to do pores. Pores are fun, and there's some pretty paintings. Um, they're fine. They're pretty. You know, after a while, you get a little bored with them, but I mean, they're fine. They're pretty. And, um, if you're doing giant ones, you know, if you did giant ones like 48 by 60, that's a lot of money. That's not cheap. It's not cheap to do, particularly if you're using real pouring medium from Liquitex and start putting those dyes and stuff in. Um, you have to be careful. Some of the uh, some of the things people are doing, from what I've been told, are um, um, you know some of the some of the uh, never mind. Just um, double check stuff with a manufacturer before you go dumping chemicals into other chemicals. Yeah, you just want to be careful on that. See, I've got a red thing here, and I've got a green one, which I like, right? And we use up the rest of this paint. I don't know what I want to do with green or red. What could I do? Uh, Something creative. I don't know. Maybe we'll do green because I have this green. You did that green, didn't you? Yes, I did. You did that green. All right, we're going to do I have no idea what we're going to paint here, right? But well, we're going to paint something, yeah? Okay, we have a link. Hopefully the gals can get the link out there for you. Yeah, you think that you think that they can, right? You notice I always start with verticals. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, why do you do that? I don't know. For some reason, I see verticals before I see anything else. It's it's, a, it's an interesting thing, but I I have a tendency to see, I see verticals before I see other pictures. So, and other than that, there's no particular reason except that that's what you know I do. Um, I've got, we've got to order some more brushes too, by the way, John. I'm just thinking I was looking oh, at these the last way, of that. I um, just put the link up there as Ginger did it. That's the link to the 10 minute giveaway. Okay, well, I'll just give this away. I don't care where you live. Um, you know, if you live somewhere with a, where we can postage goes, we can we can. Uh, we, well, we can mail it to, to you, right? We sent one to London or England somewhere, and it made it. And thank the person for letting us know that it made the cross the pond safely. I know, and I hope you guys, if you haven't, I hope you check oh, out secret our... secret word. Just make up a word today. I don't have any a secret, secret word today. Any old secret word yeah, would do? Be creative with your secret word. Okay. Sounds fun. Hey guys, I switched locations and my phone deleted a couple messages. <laughs> I was wondering what's going on there, Judy. No secret word today. Make something up. Be creative. This is your chance to show off. Um, this will be fun. We're just going to do some sort of... Um, I don't know what we're doing here. I have no idea. I'm just having fun with this, right? We're making... Ginger's making this up as she goes. But that's sort of fun too, right? I'm going to make this up as we go here. I think what's fun about something like this is you kind of see how the brush twirls. See how they're taking the brush and twirling around and doing that kind of stuff? It looks All like right. a pitcher. It looks like a pitcher of a pitcher. It looks like a pitcher of a pitcher. You're so funny. Anybody ever tell you that? No. No, I'm sure I'm they didn't. I'm never funny. I'm a serious person. I should see that. I thought that was way cool to know us about our um, 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 the elevator stuff. Don't you think so? Oh yeah. All right. I want something like that, but not yet. How's that? 
want something like that, but not yet. Yeah, the secret word today is make up a secret word. Hey, if you uh, would like to own a Ginger Cook original, you keep entering these contests. Uh, rest assured, we have an auction coming up later this month at Ginger Cook mm -hmm. Opening bids on some of them are just $45. Yep, starts off at $45, and you will welcome home. Oh, that's a good one. Peggy gets the winner. Secret word, welcome home. Oh, my gosh. Love it. See? Right? Somebody missed us. I could see that, right? Somebody. Oh, wait a minute. Piper says, I love you guys for her secret word. Oh, that's a good Lynn one. Lynn has too. travel. Brenda says vacation. Oh, you guys are coming up with great ones. I don't know why we ever don't never see. Isn't that funny how you put a little shadow and suddenly the suddenly your vase is sitting on a on um ground. On something, here. yeah. It's sitting on something. So so many times like we see a pack come in and it's floating. I do like the whole bind. I'd have to say I do like how they're they're very they they've they've stayed wet a long time. Anybody noticed how wet this paint is right there? It has stayed wet a long time. I wonder how they do that. I don't know, but they do seem to. And uh, what was it? Cinnamon was telling me about them that they don't dry as they dry truer to color. They don't dry darker as much. Uh, you know how acrylics dry darker on you? Apparently, the whole binds do not. Okay. We'll have to do a test on that. Well, it would, certainly would be, wouldn't it? Certainly would be to, to see how that happens, right? And um, is it very tropical, isn't it? With the bright green and everything? Yeah. It's just sort of a tropical picture. Ooh, Denise has got it now. Love John's background videos. See? I have one fan. Of course you do. You have lots of fans, John. Well, I got two or three around here. Keep me cool. Sure, probably send her to Judy. I think she's gonna be fixed up though Monday. Monday or Tuesday. Oh, they're gonna get her some air AC. I'm telling you what, my idea is that I think what's all very nice the holidays we've got, but we need a holiday for the guy that invented air conditioning. I think we need, he needs a big statue and a holiday. I'm telling you what, because I mean life life in the south would be just unbearable without it. And there was all kinds of people that used to live here in the old days with no air conditioning. Okay. So um in, in, okay, there we go. Just kind of play. This is f sort of fun to do. Anyway, um, so so somebody talked about sock folders. What's a sock folder, right? Yeah, what is a sock folder? And a sock folder is a person that takes their socks when they're out of the dryer. And um, folds them up neatly and puts them in a drawer. And one lady said, "What do you call someone that irons their socks?" I said, "Surely nobody is ironing their socks." Oh, please don't tell me you're ironing your socks. That's just so scary. I can't can't express it, right? Well, I would iron mine, but I can't get to the ironing board. No, you would not iron your socks. Would you? No. Okay. I <laughs> just saw the guy. Would you really? <laughs> but he does. <laughs> just. But I do fold them as soon as I get them out of the dryer. Yeah. So what's that? So is it bad to be a sock folder? No. What are it's you just saying? That, that what we're saying with the sock is folders is that a derogatory system, statement? No. Sock no. folders are that it's under sock folders do very very well with detailed paintings and have a little harder time with things that are very loose. A little because harder? Look, no, honey. It's the, impossible for us. And um, and because you you go back and you want to just um. um you know, paint it, you know, not, oh, I'm liking that. I don't know if anybody else is liking it, but I'm liking this so far. I'm entertained. Are you guys entertained? And we, we, we've we missed everybody. Yeah, we're trying to fix that problem. Um, what, fix, mix, mix, missing people? Yeah. We don't want to miss people? We don't want to miss them. So how would we do that? We're going to be on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just for your viewing pleasure. Oh, I like the light down here, too, now. See? Oh, See, okay. everything's... A Wait a minute. We had a real question go by here. Oh, real question? Yeah, oh, question. cool. Question. Wouldn't the Matisse flow paint be similar as in high pigment but stay wet longer and the flow is often cheaper than the Matisse structure? No. No. Flow is... Run, some of it runs out like milk and it doesn't stay... It dries actually quickly because it's thinner. 
It's not, not the same. Consistent. No. If you want really stay wet, oh, Golden Open makes a, the open, which is a stay wet paint. And you can buy, you know, it's been suggested to buy just the t titanium white and add that to your other paints to give them a little more longevity. But um, in any event, no. The, the, um, absolutely not. Okay. I, I, this is a question for me, for me from Christine. I tried to purchase the Back to Basics uh, tutorials, and it says I don't belong to Vimeo. And I know the free... And but Vimeo is free to belong to, isn't it? Yeah, you have to have a Vimeo account because it goes to your Vimeo account. So it will always be backed up there. When you purchase it, let's say you purchase it and you download it to your computer, and heaven to Betsy, something happens to your computer. Or you, you buy have, another one. And you have to buy another one. Well, that lesson won't be lost because it will be in your Vimeo account. You just set up a Vimeo account, free. They don't send you anything. They don't even send you anything. And you are good to go. So create your Vimeo account and purchase it. 12 hours of lessons, 24. That you own and you just own you forever. You own forever. So, um, you know, I mean, that's a lot of lessons. Yes. And also, there's, some of them are like 15 minutes long, so you can do some really, you know, how, learn how to blend, really learn how to blend, really learn how to make some clouds, how to make, how to make different kinds of clouds. I mean, some basic stuff you need to know before you tackle some of these hard lessons. We have something on our website. You know, we have some very easy, we have over 375 lessons on our website, okay? But that being said, um, the... Um, um, some of the lessons are really, really difficult and for very advanced painters and others are very simple. And so what, what I'll see is someone will want a, um, uh, a le they'll want to do a lesson, okay, and um, that it's, it's beyond their abilities. They like it, so they want to do it and they haven't learned any of the basics first. And you know, there's no requirement that you do that, but if you want to... Um, if you want to succeed. If you want to succeed. It's strongly be, recommended. We strongly recommend. Yeah, that's the thing. It says <laughs> no, again, there's no requirement, absolutely none, that you mm. do one thing or another for sure. Yeah, we right? thought about that. We thought about creating like um, grade levels, and you have to prove to us before you can get to the two cookies and three cookies. But we didn't want it. We, you know, that's not the kind of thing. That's not anybody. what we're doing here, no. right? We're not, we're not into that. We're, we're, we're definitely not into. You know what I mean? We're, we're definitely not into, you know, creating that kind of drama in your life. What we're into is teaching you how to paint. And we've done that. I'm just telling you what, we've seen people that have been with the Academy for a few years, and their paintings are extraordinary, and they always know if they ever need any help, they can come to me for help, right? Which I think is kind of nice. Don't you think so? Yeah. Uh, um, Let's see, I want some bright green here. Uh, Beth, um... I'm going to use their thalo green. They had some. Did you take it somewhere? They have a thalo I green. It back. Let's try I'm it. I'm just getting the spelling of Holbein. Uh, let's try the thalo green and see what it does. Aren't you guys curious? Beth has tried to use her HP Chromebook to watch a lesson on Vimeo, and it kept stalling. Um, you can download it to your Chromebook, watch it, then remove it from the Chromebook. Um, that has a lot to do with your internet speed going to your Chromebook. And you had to watch it on your phone, your phone probably had a better connection. And it's also going to show it at a lower resolution on the phone because the phone screen is a lot smaller. If you have problems viewing any of the lessons, please use the Contact Us form on gingercooklive.gallery. Because I love to hear from you. That's right. Yep. That's what keeps me up. So I can make sure that you guys can see these lessons. Oh, speaking of 375 lessons, we are going to start retiring some of our older lessons. Somebody we'll put wrote up a notice, and they'll be up for a month after the notice, and then they're going to be taken down. They're either going to be removed forever, or we may put them over in the on-demand store. It's getting to be too many lessons for people to go through to figure out what's going on. And also, we started off with a $350 camera, and now we have... 
you know, <laughs> thousands of dollars worth of equipment. And so it's a big difference on what, we, I mean, you know, what we're painting. If you go back to our early days, if you, get, if you look in Ginger's videos, go back to the, some of the very first ones we did and compare to what we're doing now. Did they pick the secret word yet? No, you, Rebecca, you're picking the secret word. We are retiring VLLs primarily. I don't think there'll be no wave and waters being retired. Well, there might be a couple. Well, I if so. I do, I'll Oh, we have a couple. We we'll have probably to, redo them. I'll redo the wave and waters. Yeah, the wave and waters will be redone on the newer equipment. Yeah, re re redo, re redo the... Yeah, absolutely. Redo Even when the, you guys think we're on vacation, please write to us because we always... Never on vacation. We you, don't you, take you, vacation. you throw this vacation word around. We're traveling. We're not we on be vacation. Traveling and we we be work in four hours a day, and we come to if we're driving all day at midnight, we're stopping for two or three hours after we park the car and do more of the of the video lessons, uh, you know the the um, do more of the the art critiques or John's John's working all the time. We're constantly, constantly working. Constantly working. Will we be able to still access it if we have it on a list? No. If the lesson's been removed, even if you have it as a favorite, it won't won't work anymore. Like I said, we'll give you guys a month notice. You know, we'll put it up on the website, we'll put it in our Facebook group, and let people know that these this is a list that's being retired at the end of a month. And we'll probably start it in September. Are wave and water lessons for cookie lessons and above? No. Some are we're trying to do more basic ones. We have we some have basic wave right ones. Now. Yeah. And also if you if you're a member of the um, of, of our Wave and Water uh, video lesson library, which has the most videos, you can say, I want to join the Wave and Water for a month and just tell John when you want to quit. Yeah. Or I want to, and if you, if you already take one, then you get an additional discount. You know, I mean, I can't believe all the discounts we give people. We give all kinds of discounts to people. Yeah, that's going to come at the end of the year. Um, yeah, we may not. How do we know when I'm ready, good enough to join Wave and Water? Why don't you send a pack or two in to Miss Ginger and say, Ginger, what do you think? I want this to try is where this I am right now. Should I join Wade in Water? Should I wait a little bit? You can certainly. We'll uh, certainly let you know. We'll tell you, right? And, and we'd rather be, you know, we're totally honest with you because we want you to be successful, right? And um, a lot of this stuff is that you have to really know how to do the blending stuff, too. That's one of the things. That I is key. I think we're kind of done here, John. Well, I'm kind of liking it. What time we got? You got six minutes. Then we're going to be off the air. All right, so let's draw for this. Do we have anybody, well, do we have anybody in here? I got to look over there. Yeah, I got 156. Okay, we're co coming to an end on this. We're going to do a drawing here momentarily. We thank everybody for joining us. Please don't forget to join us tomorrow night at 7.30, and we'll probably do a test sometime later in the day to see if we know what we're doing wrong. So I have to create a room and we have to do that test. Can I just purchase a wave and water video to see how I can do? Some are available on demand. You have to go to the on demand site and see. John, would we have a chance to purchase before? Only if it goes into the store. What do you recommend I should buy to view Vimeo? A 10 or 11 inch screen? Well, I'd put it on the big screen TV. Anything, oh. Vimeo will play on anything. So whatever you're comfortable with and what kind of space you have available is the device you'd want to use. Um, anything else I'm missing? Okay, last last call for entries, folks. Here we go. We're going to be pulling it up here because we're running out of time. We've got to be off the air by two. All right, signing this. Hope this was fun. Hope it you guys signed, so that means another 20 minutes to go. Yeah, I'll sign it right there. Is it dry? Yeah. Here we go. It's done. Where can I... Well, if you remember, were on Facebook, Facebook will work too. Yeah, you can put it on um, for uh, you know on Facebook. You can post your pictures on Facebook. Um, if you're an Academy member, we have a ticket system where you just put it in on a ticket, right? And and uh, that also the nice thing about the ticket system on the Academy is that um, uh, sometimes you don't maybe you don't want our coaching, but you want it. It really puts everything in a file, so you can go back in six months and say this is the first painting I did. And now here's my improvement. And you can just go back and easily click on those pictures. It's really nice. So if you sold the original or your mother took it or whatever, and you go, I wonder what that looked like. I can't. Where's the photograph for that? You always have it on the website, okay? Oh, I love some of these. Some of the words you've come up with for secret words. All right, we're ready to go.
Okay, here we go. Um, who do we have? Uh, 170. All right, this is fun, right? Alexa, pick a number between 1 and 170. Your random number between 1 and 170 is 168. Wow. 168. Boy, those of you who waited until the last minute snaked it, didn't you? You snaked it good. Sure, I'm going to put this out of the way now. There's our picture. How cute is that? That's your relative. Charlotte Little. Charlotte Little. She is, no, she is no relative to John's, just so you don't think that we're cheating or something. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know Charlotte, but congratulations, Charlotte. Um, very, very nice. I'm glad, glad you're... you're um, hanging it out with us today and learning how to paint fabulous acrylics. And I do say, I will say I do like the whole mine paints. They're very nice. Okay. Um, so Charlotte, please use the contact us on digitalcooklive.gallery and send me your mailing address where you would like this painting mailed to. Or if you don't want the painting, just let us know and we'll pick another name. Nobody's ever taken me up on that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go for... Do you, wanna, do you wanna do a drawing for the palette? No. Nope. No, because nope. they're very hard to send. All right, never mind. We're not doing that. What? Oh, yeah. All right, we'll do a quick drawing for the tub of towels. Tub of towels. Got your tub of towel right there? Yeah, here so here's, a, here, here's the tub of towels. And if you're wondering what that's about, this is my new find for la from last summer, okay? <laughs> and last year, and I've got it all over the house now. They actually work for house cleaning, which was they were designed to do. Oh, that's just so silly. Who wants who to that? clean the house? You know, they do work for that. <laughs> you know, right but double towels. Double towels. But here's what they do. What they do is, you see, my little hands that are all covered with paint. They take this even off of dried furniture. Somebody wrote and said that they had spilled nail polish on one of their shoes, and it took that right off too, uh, which I thought was interesting. And um, I, th I really like them because they have lanolin on them or whatever, and they d leave your hands nice. I've tried all kinds of wipes over the years, and always my hands felt worse than if I just used a scrubby and went after, you know, took off a few layers of skin was better than some of the stuff I've tried. These are great. So what so, we're sending you is two tub of towel. What are the little tub of towel thingies? Put yes. The yeah, so what we're sending is that we'll send you a couple packets of these to try them. There's a company. Some, one of our viewers wrote and said, Ginger talks about you guys all the time. You ought to send her some tub of towels. And I said, they sent us some towels. They we'll send us some samples. It. We'll talk about them and send them we out because like we like them. And you know, they, I mean, they really do clean nicely. And somebody said they did. We kept them on our trip when we were traveling. Had some in the car, some of these small ones. And so, if, you know, we got into a, a kind of a mess. We could clean everything up. It's very nice. Alexa, pick a number between one and one hundred and seventy. It's a tub of towel. Number between one and one hundred seventy is sixty-seven. All the way to the other end, of course. 67. Now, congratulations, you guys, on Barb Haven. Barb Haven. I know Barb. Well, she's a member of our academy. I used to be, I think. The name sounds very familiar. Congratulations, Barb. I think she lives in the Barb UK. Haven. I think she lives in the UK. This will be fun. T.O.T. winner. All right. So, Tom Towels winner. All right, Barb. Congratulations. Use the contact us. Make sure we have your... Both of winners, please use the contact us. Make sure we have your um, at mailing address so we know where to mail these awesome things off to. And um, again, we want to uh, thank everybody for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank everyone who did to our website. Oh, we did another tub of towel? You're, you're like signing off. I know we're supposed to be off. Like, oh, we are supposed to be off. We got to go. We'll do some more tomorrow night. <laughs> we're in trouble. Bye, Bye, everyone. Sammy, take us out of here, buddy. Where are you? There you go. Don't forget tomorrow night. 7.30. It's tomorrow night. Ginger flower. Bye. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.